Hello and welcome. Today's video is about com cracker combustion, measuring the heat energy released. Why would you burn crackers? Well, sometimes it's by accident, but for science, we do it on purpose. Let's begin with combustion theory. To combust, you need a few things. So here are the required materials. You will need a fuel, some oxygen, and you apply some heat initially, usually with a candle flame or a match or something else, and you'll produce carbon dioxide gas, water vapor, and some heat energy. This is known as complete combustion. That is, all the fuel is combining with just the right amount of oxygen to completely burn all the fuel, and thus you should get a very clean flame. However, what happens if you don't have enough oxygen? Well, you have the following. Fuel plus not enough oxygen will create carbon monoxide, which is a toxic gas. It will cause you to pass out. And we've got some carbon, which will be things like soot, in the air and smoke, and you'll also create the regular water vapor and heat energy. However, not as much heat energy because not as much of the fuel is being burnt completely. So we call this incomplete combustion. So for our experiment, instead of fuel, we have a cracker and we've got some oxygen. So let's carry forward. What is our design? We chose to uh, build this apparatus here with a test tube filled with 10 milliliters of water we set the biscuit on fire with a Bunsen burner, and we tried to measure the increase in temperature of the water inside. So we had a small thermometer which was inside of the test tube. Let's take a look. Come on, biscuit, you can burn. There we go. I'm going to maximize all of its energy. Hold it, hold it completely underneath the test tube. We want to maximize the. <laughs> Okay, dunk it into the Let's take a look at the results. So here we have the masses of the crackers, we've got the temperature rise, and we've got the energy, and we've got the energy per gram. As you can see, some of the uh, crackers increase the temperature of the water inside the test tube by about 32 to up to 54 degrees Celsius extra in temperature. And from there, we were able to calculate the energy in joules. It's a unit of energy. And we also uh, divided the energy by how many grams we had to calculate the energy per gram. This will give us some indication that, okay, well, my, gram, my cracker isn't quite the same size as your cracker, but you should be able to calculate, on average, how much energy you would expect to get out of different size crackers if you weigh them using this mathematics we have here. So, if I had a biscuit which is, say, 7 grams, well, I could just take one of those energy per gram calculations in purple and multiply that by 7. That should give me an estimation, a prediction. But you might be thinking, how did, how did I calculate the energy? It's a little bit of chemistry. Let's walk you through it. The energy in joules is just the change in temperature. Multiply that by the specific heat of water, which is how much energy is required to increase the water by 1 degree Celsius for every gram of water. Well, and also you multiply that result by how many grams of water you have. Now, if we examine our uh, test tube with our thermometer inside, we had exactly 10 mils of water. And luckily, one mil of water is worth one gram of water. So if there's 10 mils, there is 10 grams of water. So if I substitute all the numbers in from the table before and also the 10 mils of water, so if my uh, temperature rise was about 54 degrees, uh, it's about 54 degrees Kelvin, so that's what the capital K sign is for. And we're multiplying it by the specific heat of water, 4.2 joules per grams per Kelvin, and multiply that by the 10 grams, and we get a result of 1,680 joules of energy. And there we go. Let's do some questions. Let's ponder a little bit about what we have found. Question 1. Was the reaction observed complete or incomplete combustion? Well, if we examine the video footage, we can see that the cracker, when it's burning, creates a bit of smoke. And the smoke is made up of tiny particles of carbon, little bits of soot. And if we go back to our first slide, as per, per before, we can see that incomplete combustion actually accounts for this. Not all the fuel is being burned completely, so some of it's incompletely burnt, which would be carbon monoxide, not enough oxygen, or sometimes no oxygen at all, and that would just be the carbon. So we can safely say that from our observed uh, reaction, it would have been incomplete combustion. Question 2. 
the amount of energy absorbed by the water is less than the total energy released. Why is it so? Well, if we examine our apparatus here, heat doesn't travel in only one direction. It actually travels in every direction around the source. So, as you can imagine, only some of the heat energy is actually going upwards into the test tube. And we've also got situations where the students who were operating the tongs and the cracker weren't very coordinated uh, in the fact that the flame wasn't always underneath the test tube 100% of the time. Sometimes it was to the left, sometimes to the right, and sometimes right in the middle. So not all of the energy that was released by the cracker was captured and absorbed into the test tube. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.